What's up everybody? Uh, Mitch back with another tech tip here today. So today I'm following up on a video I did a while back uh, showing off Proxmox. Today is the day. I'm going to be showing off software-defined networking in Proxmox. So anyone that's used Proxmox for a while may be familiar with that it's kind of been there for quite a while, but now it's officially front and center. It's supported. There are still a few features that aren't fully in a stable production ready state, and we'll talk about that. But uh, come on in, we're gonna do some screen cap and we're gonna talk about software defined networking and the state of it in Proxmox. Okay, so software-defined networking, a uh, really fancy word to say networking with some extra features. So Proxmox has always had a pretty cool networking stack, but the way that it worked was really by server by server. So each server would have their own network configuration. Ideally, in a cluster scenario, they would have a lot of similarities, so things could fail over. Um, very easily if you have VMs going from one node to another, but it wasn't necessary and it was additional configuration. So if you had VLANs and you wanted to do multiple VLANs, well, there's a few ways you would do it. One, you would tag the VLANs themselves on the actual VM. That can get really messy. If you've got lots of VMs and lots of VLANs, just tagging the VLAN ID on the VMs is not a great way to do that. It's rife for making mistakes and it's hard to keep track of. So another way you would do it is you would go into the networking tab and you would create a VLAN interface for each one. But if you have a cluster, you would literally have to go through and do that on each node. So again, it's just not very nice, right? It's not user friendly. So software defined network has kind of been there for quite a while now, uh, but it was opt-in. It wasn't something that was front and center in Proxmox, but since 8.01, I believe, now it is. So if you install Proxmox, the newest, latest version, you're gonna see it front and center in the UI. So with that being said, let's dive in. I've got a virtualized environment here, and I even have a Proxmox cluster bare metal one. And we're just gonna go through some of the cool things about software-defined networking. We're gonna show off how you can set up your own source NAT networks, kind of hide away a network, and, uh, and also with DHCP. And then I'm gonna tease some really cool stuff, so like software-defined routing uh, as well. So let's just dive into it, and we'll talk about it. So the first thing I'm gonna show is the standard networking package that you would see in Proxmox for the last number of years. So you go to the node level and then you click on network and you have the actual network interfaces for that individual node. And then you have the actual bridges. And uh, uh, what you think of a bridge as is a virtual switch. It's a, it's a switching mechanism for your VMs. So typically all on a layer two network at that point. Now you can have multiple bridges. As we can see here, we've got VMBR0, which is tied to the ENO network, one network interface, and that's on the 192.168 network. And then we've got VMBR1, which is our Ceph network in this case, and it's tied to bond zero. So that's an actual bonded interface. And it's, it's tied to the 10.10.10 network. So this is how standard networking looks in Proxmox by default. And you can go and you can create things, right? We talked about VLANs. So we could go in and we could create individual VLANs at the host level for your uh, configuration. You also have the ability to use OVS, so Open Virtual Switch, which is a really, really cool uh, feature as well. It actually goes further in functionality than just standard Linux bond and bridges, but we're not gonna dive into those today. If someone wants to know more about that, let us know. We're gonna kind of skip over that and we're gonna go right into the new thing, the, the new shiny piece, and that's software-defined networking. It allows a lot of really cool things. So if we hop over to our other Proxbox environment here, this is a very small test environment. It's actually virtualized. We can see again, when we go to the network level, we have one bridge in this case, but we have two network interfaces. So let's go down to SDN and let's take a look at what we have. So we go up to the data center level, because at this point, remember, we're not dealing at the host level anymore. We're now doing it at the cluster or the data center level. In this case, it's not a cluster, but it still, it still tracks, the same logic tracks. We're going up a level from the host. So we go to SDN and we can see by default, there's a local net that's already created. That's just a network of all the interfaces, but we're gonna create some zones. And what a zone, you can think of a zone is, it's a network zone that can have multiple networks in it. So it's like a playground for multiple networks and you can have many of them. So for example, you could have a DMZ zone, um, you could have a home net zone, you could have multiple zones, and then from inside of there, you could have multiple networks. So that's where those VNets come in. 
So let's create a zone and let's go through. So we can see in our zones, we have multiple different types of zones we can do. We've got simple. This is what it sounds like, just a simple zone. This one's really cool though, because it allows us to do something called source net or masquerading and allows us to have a separate subnet within our network that's completely fenced off from the rest of our network. Now that subnet can still by default get out to the wider network and the internet, but the rest of your network can't get into it. So it's kind of interesting, has some of its use cases. We'll show off that in a minute. We also have VLAN network, so we can create VLANs. So if we click VLAN, we give it an ID, we tie it to a bridge or a network bridge, so a switch. Um, and then we give it the nodes if we want to add to it. And then essentially you add it. And then from there, you can start uh, divvying up your different VNets with different VLANs. In this case, and then we'll also we'll just briefly talk about the rest. We have Q&Q. So Q&Q is really interesting. For a home lab, probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. What Q&Q is, is essentially VLANs inside of VLANs. So what they typically call the outside VLAN is, is the service tag, the service VLAN. So you can imagine this could be for something like a service provider where you only have the ability to do 4096 VLANs total. Well, a lot of networks, uh, especially in the data center, go beyond the need for 4000 or 4096 networks or VLANs. And so what you can do is you can do tag within a tag. So you could have a service VLAN tag of let's say 10. And inside of that, now you have additional networks with additional VLAN tags. So you can have 4096 service VLANs and 4096 in each of those VLAN tags. So you can get some pretty massive numbers, right? And so, yeah, if you're a service provider and you have a client that needs three different networks, well, you can give them the service tag of 10, so they're a client 10, and then inside of it, they get to make their own VLANs. And they have, let's say, 20, 30, 40, or even they can have their own 10 inside of it because it's encapsulated inside of that. So QEQ is really interesting, but again, for a home lab, probably not a whole lot of use aside from just learning, right? It's good to learn. So VXLAN is really cool. It allows us to take a layer three networks and essentially make them look or seem like a layer two network. So if you had two Proxmox servers in complete different uh, network environments, so one at site A and then one at site B, and they're going over the wider network, potentially like the wider the WAN, the internet, you could have uh, those two nodes communicate as if they were in a layer two subnet. So that's really cool as well. Now this feature is still opt-in. It's not fully stable. There are some state uh, features within SDN that aren't completely production ready. Uh, and EVPN as well. I'm not even gonna begin to uh, pretend like I really understand EVPN, so maybe we'll save that for another day. Uh, but without further ado, let's jump in and let's do a simple VLAN or a simple uh, zone and let's look at the cool things that we can do. So let's create a new simple uh, zone and let's just call it test lab. And we'll keep the MTU size auto, uh, which is 1500 by default. And we are actually going to use IPAM. So we are going to use a DHCP server for this. So it'll be, it'll be pretty cool. If we go to advanced, we can see if we have a DNS server, we can use this. So uh, Proxmox supports power DNS by default. It's really easy to set it up as well if you want to configure that and have reverse lookups and, and lookups. So let's just add this network. Now we move a layer deeper into the VNet layer. And now we can create a VNet tied to our zone that we just created called test lab. So there we go, we have test lab. So let's just call this um, home net one. And so you have eight characters that you can put in the name. If your name doesn't fit in there, well, it gives the ability to do an alias as well, but looks like we were able to fit it all in. So let's just call it home net one here as well. Uh, we're not gonna tag it because simples do not support VLAN tagging. You can make it VLAN aware, but you can't tag it with a VLAN. That's where the VLAN zones come from. All right, so let's create that. Now we can see on the right side, if we click on it, we have the ability to create a subnet here. But we got to do something first. We have to install a tool to give us the ability to do DHCP servers because we can create a subnet and then we can have Proxmox hand out the IPs to our VMs for us. So let's go in and let's quickly install the piece of software that we need. So it's as simple as an apt install DNS mask. I'm also going to disable the service in a single command. So let's go system ctl disable now dns mask so essentially what i'm doing here is i'm installing uh, this service that gives us the ability to uh, be a dhcp server but i'm also disabling the service because we don't want it running as a daemon we want our our pv server to be able to call upon it to, to run commands against it when it needs it but it doesn't want to run it as a daemon okay so that looks good 
Next thing we have to do is we have to go back to our SDN and let's go to our zone and quickly edit this. And let's make sure we click automatic THCP. So we are going to make sure that this uh, zone has the ability to hand out THCP addresses. So now we go back to our home net and let's create a subnet for this guy. So let's do the 172.12.0 network slash 24. And so the gateway is going to be the IP that Proxmox, the host itself, uses as its uh, the gateway IP. So it's the, the IP that the VMs are going to contact to get out to the wider network and then out to the internet eventually. So 172.12.12.1. And in this case, we want to use source netting. And I'm going to show exactly what it's doing under the hood when it's doing source netting because it's actually really cool. It's just an IP tables a uh, couple of commands. In this case, we're not doing a DNS zone, so let's just leave it as is. And now we go to our ranges. So you can now give it a number of IPs that you want to section off just for DHCP. So let's go 172.12.12. Let's start at 10, so we'll reserve the first nine. And then we'll go 172.12.12.50. So we'll go from 10 to 50 as our DHCP range. All right, so let's create that so we can see it's ready to go. Now, nothing is actually set in stone until we go back up to the SDN layer and we click apply. So that's really cool. You can do a bunch of changes, but it doesn't actually do any of them until you go up and click apply. So you can do a lot at once. All right, so there we go. So we can see our test lab network is now okay and available and everything looks good. So now we've got a VM or that's a template actually. So let's create a VM out of our template here. So let's go and let's clone it. Let's go full clone and we'll call this Rocky test. So this is Rocky Linux and we'll call it Rocky test. Clone that, that shouldn't take too long. We'll pop it open so we can look at it. So there we go, it's cloning the, the disk image there. And done, okay. And it should be finished here any second, so there we go. All right, so let's head over to our hardware of our VM. And now the last thing we want to do is we want to change the network. So we don't want to be on VMBR0 anymore. We don't want to be on our regular bridge. We want to move to our new network and we're going to see that it's now showing up here as a possible bridge that we can use. Home net one, click OK. And there we go. So let's spin up this VM and let's see. Oh, I did it on the wrong one. My bad. I did it on the, um, the template. So here we go. We go into the actual VM. Home net one, make that change. All right, so let's spin up our VM and let's see if we get a DHCP address from our new DHCP server on Proxbox. Okay, so let's go here so we can see Rocky's booting up. Let's wait for it to load. Not too bad for nested virtualization. Could be a little faster, but not bad. All right, so let's log in. Let's take a look at our IP and look at that. So we have a IP at 172.1212.11. So the DHCP is in fact working. So let's try to ping our gateway, 172.12.12.1. Okay, looks like that's good. Try to get out to the internet, ping google.ca. That looks good as well. All right, so now we have a sandbox network that we can get out to the wider network, but no one can actually get in. So we're source natting, which essentially is once it gets to 192.1 or sorry 172.12.12.1 what it's doing is it's changing the IP to the regular source IP of the Proxmox host. So it's the same thing that happens when your regular LAN traffic is going out to the internet. So for example, if your home network is on the 192.168.2.0 network and you want to go to Google, what is happening is once it gets to your router Using NAT translation, it translates the internal IP, your internal network IP, out to your WAN IP, and it sends it out over that network and over that IP. So it's the same concept, but now it's happening twice before it gets to the internet. It's happening inside of our little source NAT network, then it goes out to the LAN, and then it does it once more out to the WAN. So pretty cool stuff. All right, so that's a simple network. That looks pretty cool. And uh, let's, let's go back now to our software-defined networking. And let's take a look at a VLAN network. So let's click on VLAN. So let's give this one an ID. So it's our, our VLAN net. And this one will tie it to VMBR0 because that is our, our bridge network that we want to use to get out to the rest of our network. Um, in this case, we'll keep IPM on, but we're not going to use DHCP for this network. And click Add. 
So now what we can do is we can go in and we can start creating our VLAN net network. So for example, if we had three different VLANs in our network, VLAN 20 for marketing, VLAN 30 for accounting, and VLAN 40 for R&D, we would create these right now inside of Proxmox and then it would be very, very easy to assign each VM to these VLANs rather than having to remember and trying to tag them individually uh, or having to create individual VLANs on each node. So let's go VLAN 20 and for the alias, let's say that's marketing. Okay, and in this case, we know we're gonna tag that with 20. Okay, we'll do one more. Let's go VLAN 30 and we'll call this accounting. And again, the zone is our VLAN net and tag 30. Now VLAN aware, that's not something you're going to want to do unless you want to send the VLAN responsibility down to the actual guest, the host itself, the VM itself. If you want that to be uh, handling the VLAN traffic, then that's totally fine. You would cre create VLAN aware and it would the responsibility would be then be on the VM. So there we go, let's create that. All right, so we've got two new VLAN networks. Let's go back up to our SDN layer. Let's click apply. And it's gonna reload our networking here. So now when we go in and let's say we go to hardware, if we want to create a new network on a new VM, we now have easy visibility to say, ah, okay, this is a VM for marketing. I know marketing is using VLAN 20, boom. So we attach that directly to that network device. So super, super easy. Um, and it makes for a lot less mistakes. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna show is now we've got a VM that's up, right? And we've got a DHCP IP uh, associated with it that's coming from our Proxmox server. We have some visibility that we can get from that as well. So if we go up to our SDN level again, and we go down to the IPAM, we can actually see now that the gateway is actually assigned to the 172.1 network, but we can actually see the VMs in which IP they're having, they have associated with them. We can actually see here, we could delete those leases or we can edit those leases on the fly here from the Proxmox UI, which is really cool as well. So that's really awesome. Um, that being said, so what I want to do at this point is I want to kind of put a pause and what I want to do is, is tease some really cool stuff. So the next step I want to do is I want to show off some more software defined networking, but I want to put some software defined routing in as well uh, using Proxmox and a tool like OPN Sense. Some of you may be familiar with OPN Sense, some of you may be familiar with PF Sense. This really lends itself well to a home lab environment. There may be some production environments as well. Actually, there definitely are that would that can find this useful. But what I think I'm going to do is we're going to pick this up as a part two. We're going to show off some more of the software defined networking features, but we're also going to throw in, like I said, the routing as well. So we'll have the VLANs configured, and then we'll have a router that's in place to actually carry the traffic from one VLAN to the next. So we can set up some rules and do some really cool thing with the networking. But because I think this is really conducive to a home lab environment and a learning environment to help you guys learn along with me, I'm gonna put this on our 45 Home Lab YouTube channel. So if you haven't subscribed to that channel yet, what are you doing with your life? We just released a really cool video where we ran over a uh, home lab server with a truck and it didn't even turn off. It was still running the entire time. So you gotta check that video out. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this quick little look through of software defined networking and some of the features that Proxmox has available to it now. Uh, and hopefully you're excited for going into some of this software defined routing with us on the Home Lab channel. So, with that said, uh, thanks for coming along, and we'll see you soon.